guys welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be on the Fenty Beauty collection now this video has been popping up on everybody's channel and I have to admit I was gonna be one of those girls to post on the day of launch but I had some major technical difficulties so instead I decided to test out the products for a full week to give you guys a really nice broad spectrum on how the products hold up on a girl who has oily skin, how they perform throughout the day, and if I was to have any issues. So I figure a week's review is better than a first impression one day review. I still did a first impression showing you guys how the products apply, but this has been over the course of a full week. So I can really give you guys some really honest opinions on the products and tell you guys what you need and what you can leave. So if you're interested, stick around. So I'm starting out with a clean face, of course, and I've already moisturized with my favorite moisturizer with an SPF. And we are going to start out with the Fenty Beauty Primer. So this is called the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer, and it retails for $32, which is not unreasonable. And you get 1.08 fluid ounces, which is a little bit more than the typical primer, which only comes in about one a uh, fluid ounce. They, they claim this to be a shine stopping pore diffusing primer that smooths the way for a better foundation application and longer wear with an instant retouch effect. Now you guys know, I'm going to go ahead and shake this up, but you guys know I am used to double priming because I do have acne prone skin so I have a little bit of acne scarring um, and I also like a mattified face before I get started and I like to add my glow where I need it but this primer is supposed to do all of those things for me and unlike some of the other matte primers this one is supposed to be a little bit um, smoother and nicer to put on the skin so it is a soft pale pink color and I'm gonna go ahead and apply this now putting this on it does feel like a moisturizer has a very soft smell to it nothing to write home about I mean it doesn't smell bad at all it doesn't have too much fragrance which I think is a good thing especially if you break out hopefully this does not break, make us break out they do claim that the primer is supposed to even skin tone smooth out the texture mattify the skin um, all without giving like that chalky cast and I have to say I don't have any type of cast on my face it looks like my skin and it's not oily so thumbs up so far so now we're gonna go in with the foundation and this is called the pro filter soft matte longwear foundation now I picked up the shade 420 and this is for deep skin tones with a neutral undertone which I think fits me the best when I purchased this online earlier um, I did get the shade 430 but after looking at it in the store I felt like the 420 would be best so let's just see how this looks so the packaging looks exactly like the primer. Um, the only difference is this has a white top and the primer has like that soft pink look to it. So this is supposed to be a medium coverage, which I tend to go for more of a medium to full coverage or something that is buildable. Um, so we're going to hope that this one is buildable because I do like, you know, to look like I have makeup on. <laughs> Um, and the skin types are for sensitive, normal, dry combination and oily and I am on the sensitive kind of combination oily side. Um, the finish of this is supposed to be matte. It says it is a soft matte longwear foundation with buildable medium to full coverage so that's good in a boundary breaking range of shade, shades which I mentioned earlier 40 shades and it seems that she has about 10 shades per uh, color group so 10 light 10 medium 10 deep 10 dark you know which is great um, this is also without paraben so that's good so it does tell me to shake this up so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm going to um, I did not purchase the Fenty Beauty brushes I mean they look pretty but I just didn't feel like I needed to um, they range, I think they retail for about 30 something dollars, around the same price as the foundation, which this foundation does retail for $34, so it is $2 more than the primer. But I am going to use my e.l.f. brush. Now, this brush is clean, but the e.l.f. brushes do, um, 
they stain even after you wash them they still look like this so that's one thing when it comes to getting more of the affordable brushes they're kind of hard to clean so let's go ahead and put this on my hand okay so the consistency off the bat reminds me of the makeup forever HD but I am loving the way it looks it is a little bit runny so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this okay the color looks really off in the camera it looks a little yellow but it is covering pretty well and I'm thinking that I probably will do better with the um, 430 but I don't know so let's just blend it in to see it does have that very light scent that I mentioned earlier that the same scent that the primer has and with applying it with this brush I do feel like it would be best applied with the beauty blender but I did want more of a full coverage, so I did go in with my brush. So I went ahead and did the right side of my face only, and it is drying down very fast. It does not feel um, tight on the skin, but I can definitely tell that it's not wet. It feels great, and it does look like skin, honestly. So far, so good. Let me go ahead and finish up the left side. And I am using more pumps than I normally would with this foundation, I have noticed because I used all of that on that one side of my face. Now I do have some breakouts, um, so we can really tell, you know, how the coverage is. And at first sight, <laughs> at first glance, when you put this on, as you can see on camera, it looks super yellowy red. But after it's blended, you can see it is perfectly matching me so after it dries it's all good okay so now I have the foundation applied all over the face um, and again it looks very skin like but it still dries down to a matte which is groundbreaking <laughs> to be honest because like I said every time I've seen something that looks natural it always leaves you with that dewy finish and I'm just not a fan I like to add the glow where I want it I don't want to naturally be glowing through the foundation because my oils are going to pull through and then it's just going to be a greasy mess so um so far so good the color is a little bit off but I'm gonna let it settle for just a second and I'm gonna come back and we're gonna see you know what happens with that okay the foundation has dried down completely um, it feels really good on the skin like it doesn't feel like every time I touch my face I'm getting makeup all over my hands which is good um, it's just it's really lightweight I feel like I'm not wearing anything which is good and also like I said before I have acne scarring and it pretty much covered everything up I thought about going in with the second layer but I think I'll just leave it like this um, for video sake so I'm gonna go in with my concealer and um, do my eyes and I'm gonna come back with the other products All right guys, so this is actually day two. After the last clip you saw, my camera crashed, so I had to go get a new camera. So the quality on this one is a little bit different, but we're gonna go ahead and go into the matchstick that I picked up. I didn't pick up a concealer because I like to use um, a creamy concealer, not necessarily a stick concealer. So I picked up the matchstick in Espresso. And let's open that and see what that looks like. Now you do get 0.25 ounces in this. And here is the packaging. It says Fenty Beauty on it. Not sure if you guys can see that. These are magnetic. So if you do get the other matchsticks like the glow ones and also the concealer ones, um, they will stick together. <laughs> but I just got one. So this is what espresso looks like. It has like a reddish tone to it, very dark brown. And this is, I believe, the darkest matchstick that she does have. So let's see how much product we get. All right, so you get about this much product, which I think we could use a little bit more, um, but these are $25. So that's up to personal preference, whether you think that is 
good enough for the money. I'll decide if this is good enough if it applies the way that I expect it to. Okay, that's a little dark on me. Usually I um, contour with just powder, but I can tell it's gonna make an impact. It is a little bit kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It didn't apply as smooth, it kind of, you know, sketched a little bit. I don't know the word I'm looking for. But it looks like you just need to warm it up because it did better that second time. Now I only contour with cream if I do use a cream on my cheeks. I, I don't trust myself to do that on my nose so I'm not gonna go there. Um, sometimes I just bring it down what's left over on my beauty blender, you know, around my chin and stuff. So we're gonna see how this blends. And this is a damp beauty blender. Wow. That looks amazing. And I'm not the best at cream contour, you guys, and that really looks good. Wow. I'm impressed. That looks amazing. Let's do the other side. So it's not a very, it's not a super creamy product, but it's not dry to me. All right, so let's get a full speck of the face. Looking pretty good. I'm impressed. So I picked up two of the Kilowatt highlighters. I picked up Ginger Binge and Moscow Mule. This is the duo. And I also picked up Trophy Wife just because I knew that this would probably sell out. So um, I knew that I would wear the Moscow Mule and the Ginger Binge more on a regular, you know, everyday basis, just because when I looked at the Trophy Wife, I mean, it's yellow. So today I think I am going to try, if I can open it. Well, number one, the packaging is cute. I mean, it's nice and heavy duty, even though it looks like it would be like this cheapy plastic kind of look. Um, it has a nice weight to it, which I can appreciate. And it has an iridescence to it as well, which is super cute. Mine is a little dusty for whatever reason, but this is Ginger Binge and Moscow Mule. And Ginger Binge is this one here, and Moscow Mule is on this side. So I think I'm just going to apply the really sparkly one, which is Moscow Mule, on my eyes. I'm gonna do an eye look with this instead of putting it on the cheek because I know this is gonna work for me. I really do love it. Let me actually swatch it. So this is Moscow Mule. Can you see that? And Ginger Binge. I'm gonna put that right next to it. And one of them has a little bit more of a bronzy tone and the other one is a little bit more of a pink undertone, but they're very similar as you can see. One is a little lighter, one is a little darker. But I really do like this and I love this type of glow in the winter time. Um, for some reason, I just tend to go for more of a warm glow than like a champagne golden glow. So that's why I picked this one up. So I'm gonna go in with Moscow Mule and put that on the lid. It is the more shimmery tone. So let's see how this applies. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Super soft, very pigmented. I'm not having to dig into it. I love it. It's super pretty. So easy, like it's effortless. Applying these products I've noticed is very effortless, which I can appreciate, especially getting ready for work in the morning. You don't have to like think too hard. You just, and everything is efficient. It works, you know, just that fast. I've applied that. Super pretty. All right guys, so I'm just gonna apply my eyeliner and everything real quick and I'll come back when we finish up the face. Now for the Trophy Wife Highlighter. Same packaging, you get 0.28 ounces. And let's see, this one scares me you guys because it is yellow. 
it's a yellow highlighter and it looks very glittery i think i'm gonna start off by putting this in the inner corner just to see because mm. ah. y'all it's yellow green let me zoom you in Look at this. Super pretty in the inner corner. But what is this gonna look like on my face? <laughs> I'm so scared. Okay. So let's just take a little. Oh, okay. So what I will say is very glittery, very glittery. Mm. This is very glittery. This is the side of my face that has texture as well. Let me stick it on this side. It's gorgeous though. It's not as bad as I thought it would be, but it's a lot of glitter. I mean, major glitter feels. Mm, I don't like that. Yo, I don't like that. In the camera, it looks nice because you can't see each and every glitter particle, but it's very glittery. That's a bummer because it's such a nice color. If it had more of a buttery texture, I, it's almost like I want to put more to see. Like, did I not put enough? Mm -mm. It's a little too glittery for me, but it's gorgeous. Can't lie. I may have should have layered it. I think I'm going to put a little of this... Um, in there too. This is my ginger binge. Cause I feel like the pigment leaves once you put it on. I mean, I didn't put a lot cause I'm scared, but it's almost like I'm left with nothing but glitter with that. So I layered them. Let's try the bridge of the nose. Even scarier, right? You got that green glitter on me. Let's just go all out then, huh? We it's for the video. I just don't like looking crazy. But I do. I look crazy. All right, whatever. I applied it like I wasn't scared. So this is how I'm looking. I'm super glowy. I do love the way it looks on camera, but I will tell you in person, it's very glittery. And I feel like I need to go in certain areas and kind of smooth it out, I guess. And this is just my powder brush. Gorgeous, 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 but it's way too chunky. The glitter is just way too chunky. So the last product that I'm gonna try is the Fenty Glow, and this is her lip gloss. So this is how this looks. I love the packaging on this. I like that it's metallic. I think that if everything would have had this like metallic look to it, it would have looked a little bit more higher end, but I do like this. It's kind of like a shorter um, tube than we're used to, short and fat. So let's see how much you get in here. You get 0 0.30 fluid ounces. And let's see. Ooh, so you do get a fat doe foot applicator, which I like. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go in and apply it. It looks to be like a mauve color with some shimmer in it. Okay. 
person. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the lip gloss. I will say it is a clear lip gloss with a little bit of shimmer in there. Um, it's it's clear no pigment this is like my lip color that you're seeing but I look pretty I do like that I look gorgeous like that kind of you know naturally pretty type of look if you're looking for pigmentation in a lip gloss this is not gonna be it for you because as you can see it is a clear lip gloss like So I want to start off with the matte photo filter primer. Now this claims to be matte. It also claims to blur out any imperfections and, um, you know, of course work well with the, uh, photo filter foundation. I will say that if you have dry combination skin, you probably would love this. But as you saw in the demo, when I applied this, I noticed that it was similar to a moisturizer being that I have oily skin. I don't need a primer that applies like a moisturizer, to be honest with you. Um, it wasn't greasy or anything, but it did provide moisture to my skin, I will say that. And it didn't work against the foundation. I think it works really well with the foundation. Um, but because again, I have oily skin, I had too much of a moisture barrier being that I had already moisturized my skin beforehand. And it kind of gave me a little bit of a breakout here. Um, and that's what I have noticed over the course of the week. Um, wearing this kind of gave me a little bit of a breakout. Now, I do have sensitive skin. It could just be that my skin is adjusting. But I will say it's this because I tried this out for three days. And afterwards, I stopped wearing this. I just use my normal primers that I always use. And the breakout is dissipating. So um, I will say that it was this. Um, in conjunction with the foundation, in conjunction with my moisturizer that I put on. So this is one that if you are an oily girl, I will say leave it. If you are dry or combination skin, definitely pick it up. You may like it, but if you have texture or acne prone skin and you want something that's going to create the smoothest surface, this isn't going to do that for you. Next, let's discuss the foundation. So this is the matte pro filter foundation and I am in the shade 420. Originally, I thought I was in the shade 430 when I ordered everything online but when I went into the store I could tell that that was going to be too dark okay so when I applied this as you saw in the demo it went on very yellow so that leads me to my next point this foundation does oxidize when it dries down it dries down a little bit darker um, and as you can see the color match is perfect it looks amazing against like I mean this is crazy okay I don't think anything has ever matched me as well as this it's not too warm it's not too yellow it's not too red I mean it's just perfect okay so that's one thing you guys know 40 different shades to choose from it was difficult choosing a shade which is a good problem to have okay so um kudos to Rihanna for definitely not leaving the black girl out okay because so many companies do that and it's pretty much unacceptable in 2017 another thing I will say about this foundation that is groundbreaking in my opinion um it's very lightweight and it's matte usually when you find a lightweight foundation um that looks very skin like it is a dewy satiny finish this is matte this is unheard of in my opinion i've never really seen anything that was matte lightweight and skin like okay all in one so that's amazing right then and there and i know a lot of people feel like this may not be the coverage that they're looking for well first off we need to know what the product offers this offers a medium coverage now it is buildable and i have hyperpigmentation on my skin I did not need to build this foundation up to get the coverage. I feel like the coverage is great. When you think of Rihanna, you think of beautiful, natural beauty. Um, that's not a cake face. That's not something that's going to be super full, heavy coverage. Okay, so this is very skin like and it's still covered up, like I said, all the uh, hyperpigmentation that I have on my skin from my acne marks. So 
I say good job, you know, job well done on this foundation. Um, it holds up pretty well throughout the day. I feel like with my own primers that I use, it held up a lot better. Um, I didn't get as oily and I didn't spray my face like I normally do with a um, setting spray because I really wanted to see how this performed. Because when I first applied this, the dry down on this is phenomenal. It looks so matte, as, almost as if you don't need to set it. I did set mine just because I always set everything and I wanted to, you know, be able to compare it in that way. So I did set mine with a very light, um, powder. I would say overall it does stay pretty matte. It just makes you look really healthy, nice and radiant without being greasy and glowy. Now you're not going to look super matte all day long with absolutely no shine. If that was the case, she wouldn't have come out with those blotting papers that she came out with or the um, translucent powder, right? So we have to be realistic here. Um, so you are going to get some oil breakthrough if you are an oily girl. So I can't speak on those who have dry skin, but if you are an oily girl, don't expect to be completely matte all day long. When my oils did come through, I still look flawless though. So I'm not mad at it. Next, let's talk about this matchstick. And again, I got the color Espresso. So I did like this. I do like the packaging. I like that it is magnetic, even though I only got one thing. Um, but what I will say is that if you are a beginner in cream contouring, Check these out. I don't think it's something that you absolutely need, but it is definitely something to try out because the blend on this was amazing and I still got that um, definition that I wanted. A lot of times when things are super creamy, they blend out to the point where I can't even see them anymore. And this one blended out so flawlessly and it still gave me that subtle definition, but you know, you can tell it's a nice contour, but it looks super natural. I was impressed with this. I didn't think I would be, I have to admit, because my Black Up Cosmetics contour stick, it's pretty amazing. Uh, but this here, I think this is great for beginners and those who are not really used to um, contouring with cream. And I'm one of those. I wouldn't say I'm just a beginner, but you know, not... Um, not an expert, okay? So definitely try this out. I believe this retails for $25, not too bad. If you get all three in the sets, I think you pay $54 for three of them, so you will save a bit there. Um, but I wasn't interested in the concealer or those glow sticks, that's just not for me. So I do like this, and I would recommend you trying it out. Do you absolutely need it? Not really. If you don't contour, you don't need it. If you only contour with powder, you don't necessarily need it. But if you are looking to cream contour, check it out. Now on to the highlighter. Now this one again is in Ginger Binge and Moscow Mule. I would say you need it simply because the highlighters are super nice. The, the duo highlighters, they're very buttery. Um, they glide on effortlessly. They are beautiful highlighters, very soft, very finely milled, not too glittery, super, super pretty. And you get one that is a little bit more subdued for the everyday girl. And if you want to go out on the weekend and hype things up a bit, you can put on the one that has a little bit more shimmer to it and a little bit more bling. So I think these are really good highlighters. Um, I believe they're $34. For the price, you get two different highlighters. Um, they're amazing, honestly. And the great thing about this is that you can use it as an eyeshadow. You can use it as a highlighter and you can also use it as a lip color if you would like. These are so buttery soft that you can do that. And you guys saw I use this as an eyeshadow and I absolutely love it. So I would definitely recommend these if you want a highlighter, okay? I love, I love this one. Now moving on to the Kilowatt Trophy Highlighter. Um, this highlighter is definitely for a makeup artist. It is for the model. It is for the um, the makeup hoarder, okay? So this highlighter is very bright. It is very glittery. It is a greenish yellow highlight. Is it unique? Absolutely. It looks nice on. I'm wearing it today. After it settles in, it looks really nice. When you first apply this, it is a glittery, golden yellow green burst of something okay so this highlighter is very unique it is the standout piece in the entire collection and if you are into makeup 
Give it a try. I think you will like it more than you think you would because when I saw this, I wasn't interested, but I picked it up because I knew that everybody would want to know you know, of uh, people's opinions on it. So that was one of those pieces that I couldn't pass up for video's sake. But is this something that I would wear on a regular basis? Absolutely not. Um, I can make it work by using a very light hand, but it's definitely not something that I need and it's definitely not something that I would use all the time. I do think it's, like I said, very unique. It's gorgeous on if you apply it correctly. Um, but it's very glittery. It's a yellow green highlight. Make no mistakes about that. Um, so you don't need this. This is one that you can leave behind. Now, if you wanted to use this as an eyeshadow or the inner corner highlight like I did, I think it's absolutely beautiful for that. Um, and the thing I do like about the highlighters is that they, that they are multi-purpose because they are so pigmented, you could do a lot with them. So if you don't like this for your highlight, definitely use it as an eyeshadow. Use it as an inner corner highlight or something like that. Um, gorgeous, you know, but is this something that you're going to want to have on your cheeks all the time? I wouldn't say so, um, but it shows up, okay? A lot of times black women have a hard time with highlighters because they are either too ashy and they don't show up. This isn't ashy at all. I mean, it shows up on the darkest of dark skin tones. So that's a good thing. Um, so it's up to you if you want to get this, but I would say leave it if you're on a budget. Last but not least, let's discuss the Fenty Glow. Now this is her lip gloss. I do love the packaging. It's really pretty and I love that it has this really big doe foot applicator. Uh, what I will say about this is that I expected a little bit more out of the performance of this because it um, is a clear gloss and I didn't expect that. I expected it to be this beautiful mauve color with a little bit of shimmer. I didn't get that when I applied it. It does make my natural lip color look prettier because it is so glossy. It has that slight shimmer and it just makes them look nice and voluminous. But again, it claims to be a luminizer, a glow lip gloss and that's what it is. Um, but honestly, from the smell of it, it's like a very faint, sweet smell. The way that it applies, it's not sticky or anything. It reminds me of like a Victoria's Secret lip gloss or squeeze tube lip gloss. When I think of squeeze tube lip glosses, I don't expect much. That's what this is in a beautiful packaging, okay? So you don't need this unless you just wanna support the brand. You want to have a clear lip gloss. You can't have too many lip glosses, but I mean for 18 bucks, you don't need this, okay? All right, guys, so that pretty much concludes my thoughts on the Fenty Beauty collection. I do wanna say that I think that her collection is very well-rounded. Um, I think that for the price point, it's amazing, and it's great for the young girl. I mean, from 16 to about 35, it is an amazing makeup collection. You're not gonna break the bank, and you're gonna get products that work, and they are efficient. You're gonna feel beautiful, and you don't have to worry about them. You're gonna find your shade i mean so there's a lot of pros to this and honestly kudos to rihanna for um curating something like this i don't know if she created it but she definitely i feel like had a hand and was involved in the the making of these products so yeah overall i would give fenty beauty a thumbs up do you need every single thing in the collection absolutely not but do you need everything in any collection absolutely not so yeah you guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was helpful for you and let me know what products you guys plan on trying out if you do plan on trying out any of the fenty beauty products and let me know if i influence you to get any of them so i will talk to you girls on the next video bye